I want to, I'm going to do some closing remarks in just a moment, but I did want to note that we have um, set our dates for next year. It's going to be the 9th through the 11th. I apologize for the continual 9-11 thing, uh, but this way we don't conflict with Climate Week or Clinton Foundation, because some of you are fancy, you get invited to that sort of thing. Um, I did want to also take a moment to thank everybody who did so much work to put this together. This is a nine to 10 month process to do a summit like this and with a particular intention. And one of it was to keep it small. So you have access to, you know, people who we've curated to be here and effective leaders. And then it, it, it's the span of disaster. Um, it's true that we may have hurt some feelings along the way. And I apologize if you hear any of those things that we're just doing the best that we can too out here. Um, but also I feel very strongly about not becoming like a big convention because I need you to know each other. And the idea is that whoever you're standing in front of, that you're like, oh, you know, there's something here for me to learn from you and that I can learn from, and that you can learn from me. And I want to keep it so much like that. Um, I, but where's, but Reva and Natalie, there's, let's start with uh, Reva. Don't try to run away. I don't think I've ever received so many compliments about someone's emailing skills before. But uh, Reva and Natalie in particular, they were like the unit that kept this train running when I, and Natalie is not hearing this, unfortunately, because she's doing something. Um, because I, I have other things that also carry my heavy travel schedule and those sorts of things that carry my attention. So without people like constantly attending to it, like this is just not even possible at all. And um, Reva and Natalie have just done a fantastic job and I couldn't be any more grateful, especially for someone like me who tends to be very um, type, a little type A. Uh, I love working with people who have similar, <laughs> which I'm like, oh, yeah. Um, that have a similar uh, approach, and that way I'm not terrorizing them, and they like that. Oh, there's Natalie. Here she comes. We're going to, Natalie, can you come in here so we can give you a round of well deserved applause? Okay, Natalie Menuzo. Thank you. She also helps me with our Mau Maui delegation, and I can only go to DC on Monday because I know that Natalie has my back the whole time. So, also, Jen Couch for being our Maui Wrangler. That was the that was the title that we gave her. Thank you. All of our tech support. Um, thank you to Tony and Steve over the last few days. I really appreciate that. Slides Live. It's their second year recording it. I highly recommend them. And um, everything will be up in about 30 days. And then we had lots of volunteers come through sort of quietly to give of their time. And so if we can just, even though they, they won't hear it, maybe they'll see it and give them a round of applause. <laughs> That's what I look like in DC all the time when they don't do what I want them to do. It's true. Okay. That's okay. This is from the Tevis Fire. Um, this is right after, I did not take this photo uh, this is taken by, I believe, Kent Porter of the Press Democrat. Um, and we saw a lot of this, and they had just obviously lost everything, but not each other. So I love that photo. And I wanted to take us back to the beginning. Unlike cynicism, hopefulness is hard earned. If you weren't here the first day, by the way, this is what I opened with. Unlike cynicism, hopefulness is hard earned. It makes demands upon us, and we, of we can often feel like the most and can often feel like the most indefensible and lonely place on earth. Hopefulness is not a neutral position either. It is adversarial. Click. It is the warrior emotion that can lay waste to cynicism. And it's what we need now more than ever. Go ahead. It says the world and its inhabitants have value and are worth defending. It says the world is worth believing in. In time, we come to find that this is so. Nick Cave. From that to a commercial for how to do this. Um, I did want to sit in that for a moment, though, and I hope that you know our style is even more evident to you as we finish out 
um, this summit and why it is that we do we do it the way that we the way that why our approach is it actually permeates through everything that we do. But I have to say, in the past couple of years, like getting support for it has been a little challenging at times. Like you, like I've said before, we um, depend upon funding. We will not charge communities. I will go out of business before that happens. It's not going to happen. So we need other entities to support us. And these are the people that not only are supporting us for this year, but they're going to help with some of some of our. Um, costs throughout the year, our administrative costs, travel costs, and all of those things. They are making it possible also because they've been listening to us and they've been watching what we do and they value it and they also want to maintain so that this is not only free to you, but when we walk into communities, that we're not trying to find our client. Because if we find our client, then we can't completely know what's going on because then I have an agenda. And my agenda has to be, what do you need and how can we help, period. It has to be that way. So thank you to all of our sponsors who made this possible. We really appreciate it. I would also like to note that these are the people who are in the room. That the, that, and we will post this on social media. These are from all of the organizations that said yes, that said that they wanted to be here with you to learn more, to learn from you, and to learn with you. And um, it's a it's a very it's it's a very honored space for us that all these people would take the time and also to be vulnerable. A conference is not the place you really think about going to be vulnerable, unless you're in a cult. So. Um, levity. Um, okay, and then these are these are the rest of them. So they're on both, but I just wanted to make sure that you had an idea that these are the organizations. It's about 140 organizations about 195 leaders, and we're very grateful and honored to spend this time with you. Finally, I'll leave you with this image of hope. This is a house that was built in 2009 um, up on St. Helena Mountain over here, and in the glass fire in 2020, this mega fire came up over St. Helena Road, and it skipped right over this house, even though it has, uh, you know, trees over it and redwoods and it took out a wood barn right next to it and then it went and it burned unfortunately every home around it this house was built above code um my mom built this house in 20 uh, 2009 and she sold it in 2017 and this was the only house left standing in 2020 and so it does work the things that we're talking about beyond just each other so I wanted to give you, leave you with that bit of hope too. We are not helpless against mega fires. We are not helpless against the era of climate change. We can do these things together because we are daring to hope and to help each other. And I'm going to finally use, pronounce one thing correctly, Mahalo for being here. Thank you. Wait, I have something really fun. Don't go anywhere. What was I talking about? This is the best part. Zeke! Zeke! Zeke, get up here. Uh, I haven't cried today, so I was like, how can I provide myself this opportunity? By the way, this is Kent Porter in the corner of the room. He probably took that picture. Um, I, he actually is a big part of the reason why uh, the Press Democrat won a Pulitzer Prize after our fires in 2017. Um, I actually call him a walking Pulitzer all the time. Most talented photographer I've ever seen. As long as he's here, I'm just going to point that out. Are we getting in a circle? What are we doing? Circle up, everyone. Here we go. Okay, gang. So for anyone that was in here yesterday, uh, we ended yesterday's uh, event schedule, if you would, with the singing of Hawaii Aloha. And uh, it's a traditional song that we normally sing at all of the events. It's, uh, it's unfortunately not been as common as it needs to be, but we're all going to work together to bring that back. So just so we don't um, catch anybody off guard without understanding how this goes, um, I believe that, Steve, you we, we were able to put that? Okay. Okay. So Steve was able to go and find Kainua's uh, slide from yesterday that had the lyrics. And uh, of course, right when we need it, the projector is going to uh, malfunction, but that's okay. We're going we're gonna to be graceful about that. We're going to give Steve the time he needs to get that connected. How about a nice round of applause for the sound guys and tech guys? I mean, they've done a great job.
Okay, so for anybody who's maybe a little gun shy about singing, okay, um, there's one part that even if you can't read the lyrics, everybody can join in that's not from Hawaii. And that's when we hit the part of the song, the chorus, if you would, where we go, Holy And what you're going to do is you're going to go, Holy Holy If that's the only thing you can do through the whole song, it's absolutely fine, but we encourage you to try. Okay, what we're also going to do that we didn't do yesterday is we're going to try and practice a key at least. So we're at least all get on the same page. Now, if anybody wants to get fancy and be an alto, soprano, baritone, bass, whatever, do you. It's totally fine. But uh, let's try this. Let's try that again. One, two, three. Mahalo na sa Eli Aramay, aloha, hiyo. 